Welcome back to another week of BP Kids Online. We are so excited because this week we're actually starting a brand new series. Really? What is it called? It is called Promise. What? Stop. That sounds awesome. Yeah, and I'm so excited. We're actually going to be talking all about God's promises. We're going to be talking about Abraham, Adam and Eve, and Noah, and many more. You got to tune in to find out who else. Let's, Let's go! go. <laughs> Our memory verses find in the Bible and the Old Testament in the book named Joshua in chapter 21, verse 2. And it says, the Lord kept all the good promises he had made to the Israelites. Every one of them came true. Over the past year, we've been learning about different people in the Bible. David, Esther, Peter, Jesus, and so many more. But how did we get there? Where did it all begin? When God first created the world, it was paradise. But it's not always easy for us to imagine a perfect world where nothing needs to be fixed. Especially when we hear sad or scary news about the world we live in today. But even though the world today isn't exactly perfect, there's good news. Even though things sometimes go wrong, God's promises can always be trusted. So boys and girls, get ready for Promise. Today we're going to go ask people what their paradise is. Come on, let's go. Hi, Pastor Brandon. Oh, hey. Uh, hello, Pastor Danica. I was just wondering, Pastor Brandon, what would your paradise be? Um, probably a one and a four. That's what my paradise would be. My dream paradise is a beach with jet skis and chicken wings. Hi, Kiana. Hello, what's up? What's your paradise? Oh, I'd have to say probably on a beach in Hawaii. Uh, my paradise is um, anywhere with my friends. I love that. Oh, gosh. Hi, Pastor Elaine. Oh, hey, Danica. How are you? You're on Word on the Street, and I was wondering, what is your paradise? Oh, my paradise is amazing. It's like... I don't know, trees and the sun and the mountains. And I think that's what heaven's gonna look like for me, honestly. <laughs> really? That sounds super cool. Thank you, Pastor Elaine. Um, I think I would love to be in the mountains with a gurgling brook and some beautiful trees and birds singing, that type of thing. Thank you. Hi, Rebecca, you're on Word on the Street. I was wondering, what's your paradise? Mm, anywhere I can bring a guitar. Hi, Matt. Hi. What is your paradise? Um, probably the Bahamas. Probably. Hi, Dammy. Hi. What is your paradise? <laughs> Mexico. No, the heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice how not one person had the same answer? Matt said the Bahamas. Pastor Fope said anywhere with his friends. Pastor Brandon said, well, anywhere with chicken wings. We all have a different view of what paradise looks like to us. Today, we're gonna to be learning about the paradise that was brought down onto earth at the very beginning. Even with the most beautiful paradise and perfect world ahead of two individuals, they still look for satisfaction in something they weren't supposed to and disobeyed God. But do you know what God promised to do? He promised to fix what was broken. It's Blossom the Nature Lady! I was just taking a nap. Um...
Um, ugh. Oh, oh, sorry about that. <sighs> hey kids, I'm Blossom, and I'm gonna be spending a whole lot of time with you guys over the next month. We're gonna learn all about God's promises, and we're gonna have so much fun in nature. I am so excited. for sure. Oh no, I'm so yeah. sorry. It's okay, I have a bucket over there. It's not the end of the world. I just started a new hand. What's your name? My name is Bacola. What's Hi. yours? I'm Blossom. Hi Blossom. Hi. That's a lovely name. Thank you, you too. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I kind of wish it wasn't under this circumstance, but um, I don't know, I guess it kind of worked out. Yeah. I'm happy to have this accident. Yeah, me too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Maybe, maybe we should hang out sometime. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Awesome. Cool. Well, for now, I'm gonna get back to picking. Do you want to help me? Of course, I want to help. You. Okay, come join me. Listen to the best ones are the really dark ones. Got it. Mmm, these look so delicious. Mm -hmm. kids so this month we're gonna be learning all about God's promises and I am so excited today though we're gonna dive in to a little story about Adam and Eve before we do that though I need to tell you something something about me actually and that is that I love puzzles I adore doing a puzzle all the way from the beginning to the end, seeing the big picture and then going through and doing each of the little pieces until you get that big picture. And so sometimes I think that when we have a puzzle, kind of like this one, this is how we think about God's promises. He gives us a little timbit of what the end picture looks like. That might be the end picture but we don't really see how all those pieces are gonna to fit together until God starts putting that plan together and we learn more and more about how that promise is gonna be fulfilled. I think this is a great visual for a big idea for the week, which is that God promises to fix what is broken. Let's dive in. Wow, this is a mess. How am I gonna start? Mm, corners. Okay kids, let's jump into our story. So, Adam and Eve 
When you look at Genesis 1, when God actually creates the earth, he creates all the animals, and he creates light and dark. He does that first, though. And then, later on, towards the end, he creates Adam. But he thinks it's not quite good yet. So then he goes and he creates Eve. And then it's good. So God says this in chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the livestock and all the wild animals. And let them rule over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own likeness. So he made us like him. He created them to be like himself. He created them as male and female. God blessed them. He said to them, have children so that there will be many of you. Fill the earth and bring it under your control. Rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky. Rule over every living creature that moves along the ground. So God created man to be like God. And he was so happy about it. He thought that it was good. But then something happens. And this is kind of sad. Adam and Eve as the chapter actually says, fall into sin. So they are tempted to stray away from God, to turn away from God, and to follow their own selfish desires. And what does this look like? So there's a serpent, and the woman and the serpent are having a discussion. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. Don't even touch it. If you do, you will die. And the snake says, you certainly will not die. God knows that when you eat fruit from the tree, you will know things you've never known before, like God. You will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. That is quite the temptation for humanity, to know the difference between good and evil, to take the power of God and put it in our own hands. This is the temptation that they were presented with from the serpent. From there, the woman is convinced that she should know the difference between good and evil. And she goes to the tree, takes the fruit, eats it, gives it to Adam and he eats it. And then when God comes looking for them, they hide from God. And then they, they're afraid. They don't know what to do because now they know that they're naked, they're not wearing any clothes, so they put clothes on themselves. And they have a conversation with God, and when God finds out what they have done, he is angry. He's frustrated. And he punishes them because of what they have done. And he also punishes the serpent. And boys and girls, this is a really important part, because even though he punishes the woman, by giving childbirth as a part of her punishment, the pain of it, and that the man would work the fields and he would have to work his whole life. And then the serpent, that he would be on the ground and he would slither all of his life. He says this in verse 15. This is to the serpent. I will make you and the woman hate each other. Your children and her children will be enemies. Her son will crush your head and you will bite his heel. I'm gonna read that one more time. Her son will crush your head and you will bite his heel. Boys and girls, this is when the promise comes in. This is a rebuke to the serpent, but it's also a promise from God that the serpent, which is really the Satan, the adversary, he will fight against one who will win against him. This passage points to the promise of Jesus's birth, his redemption and his victory over the Satan and over death. The woman's offspring, so the woman, is pointing us to Mary because the woman would be the one that gives birth. And Jesus is formed through Holy Spirit and Mary. So it would be the woman, as it says here, her son 
will crush your head, meaning Mary's son, Jesus, will crush the head of the serpent. And the serpent, the devil, the adversary, is what has caused death. And the serpent tries to strike back through death, striking at Jesus' heel, but he won't win. Jesus is the one who wins. And from the beginning, this is only the third chapter of the book of Genesis, we are told that God has a plan. He has a plan to get us back to the way that he created this world to be, to be in right relationship with God. God had a plan from the moment that we messed up. He knew how he was gonna save us through his son. And it's written right there to tell us of this promise. In 1 John, verse three to eight, it says, the devil has been sinning since the beginning and anyone who continues to sin belongs to the devil. The son of God came for this, to destroy the devil's work. And in Genesis, we get a glimpse into what God is going to do. It's kind of like with my puzzle, how we can see what the puzzle is going to look like. But when we originally get the puzzle, it's just a whole bunch of pieces. And we have to build it to get to that point. But in terms of this, God has given us that glimpse into the future. And he has all the puzzle pieces already laid out and ready to go. And then he puts them together piece by piece by piece until Jesus comes and he completes that. And then one day, almost a big, I don't know if this is like a bigger puzzle, but it's like another puzzle that God has created where he will return and he will make everything back in rightness with him again. And this makes me think of our big idea one last time, which is that God promises to fix what is broken. Like how this world is like a broken puzzle. And piece by piece by piece, he's putting it back together and making it so that it is right with him. Thanks, God. Welcome to another Coca-Cola moment with Coca-Cola. Today, I made this crazy promise to Kiana that I would do a cartwheel on the docks. Uh, I don't know how this is gonna go, but hopefully it goes out well. Two chances, I either fall in the water or <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen. Anyway, let's do this. Okay, guys, say your prayers, okay? Make sure I survive this. <gasps>